when we create static views in SwiftUI, when we say have a, a V stack, then a text field, then a button and so on, SwiftUI can see exactly what views we have at compile time. And therefore it can control them, it can animate them and more. But when we have a list like this one or for each here over dynamic numbers of views, SwiftUI needs to know how it can identify every single view inside there uniquely. Otherwise, it'll struggle to compare view hierarchies to figure out what's actually changed when the data changes. Now, in our current code, you can see we have a loop over expenses.items. So in plain English, we're saying take this array and make a new row for every item in the array, identifying each one uniquely by its name showing that name in the row. And then we call remove items when we want to delete stuff. Then later on, down here we have this button that makes a new expense item every time the button's pressed. It's called test, type personal, amount five, add it to the array. When the button's pressed, add the test item to our list so we can make sure adding and deleting works. Can you see the problem? Now, Every time I make an expense item with a sting, we're using the same name, name, test, 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 again and again and again. But up here, we said, by the way, the name will be unique. It can identify each item just by the name, so it will be unique. And so SwiftUI looks at the array and says, well, I've got test, test, test in here already. We press the button, and now there's test, 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 test. And it looks at it, and it can't easily tell what's changed. Is it with add an item in the middle, the start, the end, they're all called test, it can't tell. It knows something's changed because one item's gone away, but it can't be sure which one. Now, in the situation, we're kind of lucky. List knows what we're swiping on, so it can delete things easily. But in many other places, that extra information won't be present, and so our app will just start behaving strangely, have weird animations galore. And this is a logic error on our behalf. Our code is fine. It doesn't crash at runtime. But we've applied the wrong logic to get that result. We've told SwiftUI something will be a unique identifier even when it's not unique at all, which is dangerous. To fix this, we've got to think more about our expense item struct up here. Right now, it has three properties, name, type, and amount. And the name by itself might be unique in practice, but in practice, it's not likely to be. You could put in lunch more than once. As soon as that happens, boom, we can start hitting problems. We could perhaps try and combine name, type, and amount to make some unique string that way. But even then, we're just delaying the inevitable. It's still not really truly guaranteed to be unique. Every time a personal lunch for five bucks comes up, bang, it'll go wrong. The smart solution here is to add something to this struct that is unique, like an ID number to be assigned by hand. And that would work. But it does mean tracking the last used ID, so we haven't got duplicates there either. There is, in fact, another solution that's actually easier again, and it's called a UUID, short for Universally Unique Identifier. And if that doesn't sound unique, then I don't know what does. Um, they're long hexadecimal strings. You can see one in your terminal. If you just run UUID gen in macOS, it'll go bang. That's a UUID right there. You can make as many as you want to. They'll all be very, very different. And the only thing they have in common is the exact format. You can see here, it's a bunch of numbers here. It's like eight hex digits, then four, then four, then four, and then what? 12-ish more there like that. Um, that's a format. And you'll see all the numbers are changing apart from this one right here. This one here in the third set of numbers, the first one, is always a four. Otherwise, everything else is a random hex digit here. And this is a lot of data, right? You're seeing, uh, even with a fixed four here, we have 31 hex digits. Meaning each one could be one of 16 different values, zero through to F. And so if we made one of these, every second for a billion years, we might, might begin to have the slightest chance of getting a duplicate. They're extremely unique. Now, we could 
update expense item to have one of these baked in. I could say, let ID be a UUID. And that'd work. However, it would also mean we're gonna make this UUID by hand, then load and save the UID with other data and so forth. So in this instance, we can tell Swift actually just make the ID for us. The ID equals a new UUID. And now we haven't got to worry about this thing at all. Swift will make sure they're always unique for us. With that in place, we can now fix our for each down here. We can say, loop over the array, and this time identify it by the ID property. That's the unique identifier. If you're on the app now, you'll see our problem. There's a little warning down here. We fixed it entirely. I'll just press Command R and then add a bunch of things. Boom, no more warnings. I can swipe to delete just fine. They all work perfectly well with no warnings happening at all anymore. We're not quite done with this step just yet though because I wanna modify the expense item just fractionally more. I wanna say, let's conform this to a new protocol called identifiable. Just adding that one thing. So list of conformances, nothing more. This is one of the protocols built into Swift and it means this type of data can be identified uniquely somehow. It has only one requirement. There must be a property called ID that contains some kind of unique identifier, maybe a string, maybe an integer, maybe a UID. And we already have this ID property, so there's no more work required. Adding that one property already makes it conform to an identifiable just fine. Now you might wonder, why do that? Does our code work fine before? Well, at this point, our expense is now guaranteed to be uniquely identifiable. That's what the protocol does. And so we no longer have to tell for each how to identify each object uniquely. It knows it'll be unique identifier for every value here. That's the point of the identifiable protocol. And so we can delete ID entirely like that and get exactly the same result. It's much better.